right now on Five on Your Side at 10. This is our community. Amen. And we want justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. <laughs> Growing calls for justice and accountability tonight in central Illinois following the release of body cam footage showing the moments an Illinois sheriff's deputy shot and killed a black woman inside her own home. Tonight that deputy is charged with murder. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. 36-year-old Sonia Massey called police earlier this month about a possible intruder in her home in Sangamon County near Springfield. What happened next and was recorded on the body cameras of two deputies is disturbing. These types of videos are hard to watch. However, it's important that we share it with you so you have the whole story. We want to make sure you have proper warning on what you're about to see. Five in your sides, Brent Solomon joins us now to break down what happened, Brent. Well, you know, tonight, former deputy Sean Grayson is charged with first degree murder for the July 6th incident in Springfield, Illinois. We here at Five on Your Side carefully review the body camera footage. Another warning, the video is disturbing. We are showing it out of transparency and accountability. And so that if you choose to watch it, you can understand what happened. The Sangamon County Sheriff's Office releasing this 34 minute video Monday. It begins with an officer searching around Sonia Massey's home. He checks a storage shed in her backyard. Officers eventually get to her front door. They have to knock a few times before she answers. They wait a few minutes and then call Massey to let her know they're there. I hear a phone ringing. Sheriff's office. They wait a little longer. You come to the door or not? All right, hurry up. Then she comes out. Really hurt you. You us. She tells them she needs help after she heard someone outside. They tell her they checked the premises and didn't see anything. Deputies follow her inside the home. They ask for her ID, but it takes a while for her to find it. She walks to the kitchen and eventually picks up a pot. That's when things escalate. Away from your hot steaming water. I was on, I was on. I'm gonna go get my kit. No, she's done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. <clears throat> Dude, I'm not saying pouring water. Hey, look, it came right to our feet, too. The deputy who opened fire is also charged with aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. Moments after police released that video, I got in contact with retired St. Louis County Police Chief Tim Fitch to get reaction. Very sad for the family uh, was my first response and apologetic for the police profession to see this go so bad so quickly. Um, it was a surprise to see it go as you saw, it was literally seconds he was laughing with her, seconds later he was shooting her. Um, and there's a lot of unanswered questions after seeing that video. The former chief is a consultant for other police departments. He makes it clear he's pro-policing. He's speaking out to say that what you saw in that video is not the standard. This is an anomaly. This isn't what normally happens in these situations. And when these things do happen, like George Floyd and this situation and others, it makes big news and it should because it's an anomaly. This shouldn't be happening. So if this ever becomes routine and it doesn't make the news, that's when I'd be concerned. Massey was not armed. None of the officers who responded were hurt.
And just hours ago, the community came together for Sonia Massey's family. While they're outraged, they want to promote peace as they fight for justice. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski has more from a rally honoring her memory tonight in Springfield. And again, some of what you will see and hear is disturbing. Thirty-six-year-old Sonia Massey was at home alone when she thought she heard an intruder outside her house, so she called 911. You're clear that I'm going to both stack to a prowler caller hears noises outside the house, wouldn't answer questions hung up on us. Attorneys for the family say instead of receiving help, she was killed at the hands of the very people she called to help her. Units on scene are 1078 shots fired. The Sagamon County Sheriff's deputy claims Massey was going to throw boiling water at them. She says her last words, sorry, sir, I'm sorry. She ducks, and when she stands back up, he shoots her in the face. Sonia Massey's father says she struggled with her mental health, but had so much life left to live. The only time I'm going to see my baby again is when I leave this world. Family and friends say her senseless murder has outraged and rocked the community to its core. We asked for transparency, but it saddens me that you know, the whole world gets to see her not only lose her life, but her dignity as well. And it just never should have happened. She should still be here. Do you think that now that this happened, that people are going to be even more scared to call the police? We've been scared. We've, we've, we've been scared. Um, even before they was in her house, she told them that she was scared. So they marched for justice. Organizers of the rally brought people together here in Comer Cox Park to fight for justice for Sonia Massey in a peaceful way. As they say returning violence with violence is not the answer. We had a lot of people standing behind us in solidarity with her family. So I'm really happy that everybody came out. Um, we're having free haircuts. We got about five barbers doing free haircuts. Um, we have two face painters and free food for the community. Advocates even started a petition calling on officials to investigate the sheriff and his entire office. We have to find out why we have such a man in office that cares nothing about these smaller communities because these lives do matter. Reporting in Springfield, Laura Barczewski, Five on Your Side. And tonight calls for justice in Sonia Massey's murder are being heard in Washington, D.C. Congresswoman Nikki Budzinski, who represents Sangamon County, called for accountability on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. Like everyone who has seen the body camera footage on her final moments, I am shocked, horrified, and heartbroken. This was an appalling act of senseless violence that strikes at the core of our humanity. U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois released a statement tonight after watching the body cam footage. It reads in part, this sort of tragedy at the hands of law enforcement is all too common for black Americans and is completely unacceptable and unjustifiable. President Joe Biden also released a statement saying, quote, I commend the swift actions that were taken by the Springfield State's Attorney's Office. While we wait for the case to be prosecuted, let us pray to comfort the grieving. He's also calling on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Police Act now. The shooting, the circumstances, and the video is difficult to process. We talked with a trauma therapist who says it can create a range of emotions and trigger press past traumas. Rochelle Shorter of Restore Counseling and Wellness talks about the toll of how this latest incident can affect us all, and particularly the African American community. Even in the video, there was a lot of apologizing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry because we can't settle in these spaces. We're anticipating that something very well may happen. And so that keeps us very activated emotionally and mentally. So there's a lot of anxiety that builds inside of the body um, individually and collectively, but individually, absolutely. Schroeder offers some advice. If you feel you are taking in too much, avoid social media, breathe. And while it is good to have discussions about this, if you feel you've reached your capacity and are building on the anxiety and fear, you may want to reach out for mental health support. A St. Louis man behind bars for more than 30 years for a murder he says he did not commit is now a free man. A judge overturned Christopher Dunn's conviction in the 1990 murder of 15-year-old Rico Rogers. The case was built on the claims of two young witnesses who later recanted their statements. The judge ordered Dunn to be released immediately. Tonight, a man is behind bars charged in a deadly shooting in North St. Louis. 64-year-old Gregory Allen is charged with first-degree murder in the shooting death of 62-year-old Robert Allen. The shooting happened around 5.30 last night on Maffitt Avenue near Euclid. 
Investigators have not released a motive. New tonight, more than 4,000 people are out of work after General Motors stopped production at its Wentzville plant. A strike in a nearby seat assembly plant is causing a shortage of parts at the GM facility. Those workers say labor negotiations fell through between their union and the company Lear. GM released a statement saying they hope both sides come to an agreement quickly and no other GM plants are currently impacted. The clock is ticking on Mayor Tashara Jones' 120-day plan to protect and preserve the vacant railway exchange building in downtown St. Louis. Today is day 69 of that plan. In recent years, thieves have ransacked the 21-story condemned building on Locust Street. The city is now renting metal barricades visible on the first and second floor entry points. In addition, we learned today that the city is paying for two guards to provide 24-hour security. There's a lot of pitfalls in there right now, so it's uh, and reasonably why it's condemned. So uh, there's, it's, there are some stairs that go up and then they just disappear. Uh, so you're not going to be able to make it all the way up or not be able to make it down. The city of St. Louis is currently footing the bill for security upgrades and hopes to recoup that money through legal channels. Passing the torch. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. The growing support tonight for Vice President Kamala Harris to take over the top of the presidential ticket and the call for her to take over the Oval Office now. Countdown to Paris, we're just days away from the pageantry and competition. And gold, silver, and bronze are not the only colors drawing people to the Olympic host country. We've had just shy of seven and a half inches of rain officially in St. Louis so far with more outside of the city, but that's our third wettest July. If the rain chances the next couple of days add to that tally and how we're going to finish off the rest of the month.